now, the Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Big Board Friday. Sponsored by Ohio Northern University. The best discoveries come from the unexpected. By the Toledo Clinic. Choose well, feel better. By PT Link Physical Therapy. Feel the difference and get relief now. And by Frickers, the home for fun, food, sports, and spirits. Now, here's Jordan Strack. Welcome into Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Big Board Friday. I am Jordan Strack. We are on location at Eastwood High School tonight where we had our first game night live broadcast on our WTOL YouTube page. We'll have a full recap of this game coming up in just a little bit. We start tonight, though, with our game of the week, the huge showdown in the track between St. John's and Central Catholic. This is a huge early season battle. Both these teams cut off wins in week one, and this could be for a league title. Yes, I know it's only week two. This game tied at 21 at the half, and what a second half it was. St. John's first possession of the half. Get it down inside the 10, and they cap it off. Brady Lichtenberg scrambles and finds Thomas Zyrus back in the end zone. 28-21 Titans. Central would answer back. Bishop Vargas hands it off to Prentice Reasonover. Spins out of a tackle, ties it up at 28, but oh, he's just getting started. They give it to Reason over, over and over again. Another touchdown here. Central Catholic would take the lead back. But St. John's, they would march right back. Lichtenberg, a long strike to Zyrus. The future Toledo Rocket fights for a touchdown. But every time the St. John's Titans would score, the Irish would answer Reason over. Five touchdowns in the game. Central Catholic wins a shootout, 49-41. Christy Kopanis has more. Remember this name, Prentice Reasonover. He had five touchdowns tonight, putting the team on his back. And when Central Catholic had two turnovers early in this one, their defense battled as well. And in the end, Central Catholic getting a huge win over St. John's. Uh, it's a good team. St. John's an amazing team. But me, I, could, I just couldn't lose. This is my last, my last year, my senior year. I want to go out hard and strong. It was a big test. And to be tested this early, it's a true measurement team and have a game this early, we're lucky to be playing, you know, and, and to have this opportunity for the fans and everybody to get a game like this and uh, for people to be able to, uh, you know, get a chance to see it. You know, this was a little sense of normal that we haven't been getting and I'm glad our, we came out on the good side of it, but it was great for both communities tonight. We saw both teams at the end, how much respect there was for the, what they just went through. I know I had to go out there and put the team on my back. It was, um, it was a close game. I said I was going to lose. I got y'all. So every touchdown, every touchdown I got, it was for my team. Not selfish. Not a lot of time to celebrate this. Coach Dempsey said bright and early Monday morning on Labor Day, the team will practice and focus on their next opponent, St. Francis. Reporting from Central Catholic, I'm Christy Kopanis, WTOL 11. Christy, thanks. Couple teams looking to bounce back from tough week one losses here, St. Francis and Whitmer. Knights looking for their first win against the Panthers since 2013. Good start for the Knights after a turnover. David Kaiser drops back, floats one deep down the middle, finds Trey Talbu, the diving catch for the touchdown, 26 yards. St. Francis up seven, nothing. The Knights defense making some big plays too. Kevin Hornbeek drops back, but there's Dominic Arnold. Steps in front of it for a pick, weaves his way all the way into the end zone for a score. St. Francis wins it 31 to 8. Clay coming off a loss to Fremont Ross in week one tonight, taking the trip down I-75 to take on Lima Senior. Second quarter. Eagles facing a fourth down. Logan Heinschel hits Ty Cobb. Moves the sticks. That would keep the drive alive. And then they would make it count. Heinschel, a screen pass to Jordan Petaway. He would make a man miss. He finds his way into the end zone, but not enough. Clay loses 14-10. They fall to 0-2. To the Northern Lakes League now. The winner of this game likely wins a league title. Yes, it's early, I know, but this is a huge showdown between Perrysburg and Anthony Wayne out in White House. Generals off to a rough start, second half. Here, cough up the ball on a screen. That would give Perrysburg the ball with a short field. Generals turn it over three times in the third quarter alone. Off the turnover, Christian Golgan bounces off the defender, throws it out to Isaac Witten. What an effort here. He would score, so the Generals are down big. They would try to answer back. Garrett Pike puts one up for Evan Ray. He would come down with it. This thing's starting to get interesting. Another chance for Anthony Wayne. Charles Rediger takes a handoff, powers his way in for six. Generals now down just three. But last chance on fourth down for Anthony Wayne. Garrett Pike tries to go deep but he can't connect with his receiver. Perrysburg wins 27-24. Anthony Wayne's first league loss since 2016. We're all so excited. We played such a great game. We fought till the end, so did they. It was a great football game. Can't be disappointed with that. 
feels great. And the fact that, you know, the last two times we've kind of lost in an embarrassing fashion to come into their home stadium with our guys and take a win, it just feels awesome right now. Napoleon got a big win in week one against Southview. Cats making the trip up to Holland to take on Springfield. Off to the races with this game. Wildcats' Nathan Brubaker busts a 51-yarder to make it 35-7 at halftime. Second half, Zach Rosebrook with a lob to Joshua Mack for a big gain. And then they get back to that dominant run game. Jarrett Gurdon goes seven yards untouched for a score. Napoleon wins big 49-21. Bowling Green had a dominant win in week one, trying to make it two straight to start the year. Bobcats home with Northview. Second half, Bobcats leading it, and they would add to it. Eli Brown on the read option. Decides to keep it, and it was a good decision. Finds a hole up the middle, and he is off to the races. He would go 65 yards to the house to make it 21-10 BG. And then on their next drive, the handoff from just a few yards out, Caden Scyther trots in for six. Bowling Green goes on to win it big 49-10. They are now 2-0 on the season. Last stop in the NLL, Maumee's only win in the last two years was last year against Southview. Panthers and the Cougars in Sylvania tonight, second half. Cougars up 9-0, trying to add to it. Keith Reese takes a direct snap off the left side, breaks a couple tackles, a nifty little move down the sideline into Maumee territory, but they would fumble a couple plays later. Maumee would try to get something going offensively. Eli Styler looking deep down the sideline, but Josh Meek makes a great play on the ball and picks it off. Southview wins it 24-3. All right, time for our first break here on Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Big Board Friday. When we come back, we check in with one of the surprise teams from week one, the Finley Trojans. They've got a new head coach this year, and his resume includes plenty of NFL ties. We'll explain that coming up next on Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Big Board Friday.